What's going on and welcome to Joe's Geek Show, the video series where we talk comics. And before we get started, if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by hitting that subscribe button, liking this video, and sharing. And with that, the long-awaited, long-anticipated Batman 3 Jokers. And this book is written by Jeff Johns with illustrations by Jason Fabek, colors by Brad Anderson, and letters by Rob Lee. And this book starts off with the Batmobile colliding with the gravestone of Thomas and Martha Wayne as an injured Batman gets out of the mobile where he gets to the Batcave and is assisted by Alfred where the faithful companion strips away Bruce's suit in order to stitch him up. We then see a sequence of various scars that Bruce had taken over the years and the instances in which he received them leading to the memory of his parents murder, the memory which left the deepest scar. It's then Bruce sees on TV that the Joker had committed a crime and rushes to get his cowl back on to return to the night. The story then shifts to Barbara Gordon on a treadmill, at first saying a commercial about restless leg syndrome, which then shifts to a news report of the Joker having killed a comedian, which causes Barbara to run faster and faster until the treadmill broke, where she moves to the shower in which we see the bullet hole and replay of the horrific scene from the killing joke where she was shot. It's then that we come to the third player in this story, the Red Hood, who's in the cemetery beating a bunch of Joker's goons in an attempt to press them for information on the clown prince's whereabouts. They then manage to tackle him, sending his helmet flying, where they hold him down, revealing the scar from where the Joker had beaten him with the crowbar. And much like Bruce and Barbara before him, we see the instance in which Jason was mercilessly beaten. One of the thugs then moves to shoot Jason, but just before he can, Jason gathered to his feet and beat the thugs mercilessly, breaking their noses and arms before walking off, admitting he knew that they had no info and just needed to stretch his legs as he retrieved his helmet. We then come to another crime scene at Ace Chemical, birthplace of the Joker, as the police had found three bodies dressed up as the original Red Hood and removed them to find three men who had been exposed to Joker's toxins, making them unidentifiable. After Batman arrives on the scene, he concludes that most likely they were a distraction from the fact that the Joker stole a truck, as Batgirl then swoops in to discuss the three killings, which of course had to be by three different perpetrators, leading to the idea that two of the Jokers were imposters. Suddenly, one of the men thought dead reveals he's alive and is rushed in an ambulance bound for the hospital. However, it turns out that Jason was disguised as an EMT and presses the victim for information when Batman jumps aboard to stop him from potentially causing the victim to die. Meanwhile, on an empty road, we see the stolen truck, which pulls up to a cabin where the Joker gets out, knocks on the door, and is greeted by another Joker. There's a brief conversation between the two before one of the Jokers says that they need to meet the boss. Back at the hospital, Batman inserts the anti-Joker toxin into the patient's IV as Batgirl scolds Red Hood, who just says the man is no victim, as he has his own rap sheet. Batman then walks up to them, and at first, Jason was ready to be confrontational, but Batman ends up saying that the Joker isn't working alone, and neither should they. We then go back to the Jokers, with the third one now present, as one of the Jokers asks what they're going to do next, and the one sitting down replies, what they always do, try and make a better Joker, and he continues on to say that it's time the Joker had more meaning when he flips a coin to decide who should accompany him. Both Jokers call heads, and then the one seemingly in charge points at one. The story then takes us to Gotham Aquarium, where Batman, Red Hood, and Batgirl enter and discover that the water contains the Joker toxin as they see the fishes and shark smiling. Suddenly, they turn around to see a bunch of goons and a long-forgotten character named Gaggy. A fight then ensues with various hits compromising the tank's window as Red Hood is shocked by Gaggy but quickly moves to shoot the tank, causing the shark to eat the miniature jester. Just as the trio thought they would have a breather, one of the Jokers pops out and attacks. The three scramble momentarily but soon get the up on the Joker, where Batgirl asks Bruce if that's him. Batman identifying all the traits, seems to recognize the pattern, but is still uncertain. Batgirl asks again, but is then drawn to Jason who starts kicking the Joker when Batgirl pulls him off, and Batman is then called by Jim Gordon who says they've cornered another Joker. 
Batman leaves the two who have bound and seemingly disarmed the Joker when he reveals the acid-spewing flower. Batgirl and Red Hood check him again, taking a few more items, when Joker begins pushing Jason's buttons, who then reaches for his gun. Batgirl tries to talk him down, but the Joker has broken into Jason's head and he knows it. Continuing to recount the events from Death in the Family, even Jason's last words, If you let me live, I'll do anything you say. I'll be your Robin. With the tears streaming down Jason's face, he has a quick flash of himself broken and bloodied as he pulls the trigger. Batgirl attempts to throw a batarang, but it's too late. The bullet pierces the Joker's head as he goes down laughing. Batgirl yells at Jason, who then shoots back that she must have wanted it too, because once the last time she missed. With tears streaming down Batgirl's face, she storms out, leaving Jason standing over the Joker's body, hoping he had the right one. And all I can say is, that was worth the wait. I mean, this whole thing got teased back during the Dark Side War. That was, what, 2016? So that's four years. Four years that we waited for this book. And I was actually at the point where the interest had basically passed. At least until it came out. At which point it's like, okay, there's some interest again. And oh man, I was not disappointed. Because what I find really interesting about this book is... It's actually a rather simple story, but there's a lot of subtext. It's all of the information between the lines that I find the most fascinating. For example, as we get the introduction with Batman, Batgirl, and Red Hood, we get to see the impact that the Joker had had on them. Particularly when it comes to, say, Barbara and Jason, as when Barbara's taking a shower after a workout and Jason is fighting some of the Joker's thugs, they each have a flashback to the worst experience that they had ever had with the Joker, with Barbara being shot and Jason being beaten. And yes, the Joker did show up in like Batman's little flashback, but so did a lot of his other rogues gallery, because when it came to Batman, it was primarily, once again, the focus on his parents' death. But it's what each of these scenes accomplishes that is truly amazing because more or less it takes already well-established things that you know any comic book reader would know about these characters but still manages between the writing and the art to present it in a way that puts the emotion front and center it's not just like another skim through there is an overall narrative purpose to presenting this information again because to get the bearing on the situation, we have to completely understand where these three stand with the Joker. It was also during these scenes that the art was amazing, because one thing that I liked is that, for the most part, the flashback sequences were, you know, monochromatic. Essentially, they were like, you know, grays and such, except for the color red, particularly when it came to the blood. These scenes look to emphasize the pain and the trauma from these characters. And again, going back to Bruce, back to the night his parents died, because when it came to that scene, and particularly as it just went down the list of all of the scars that Batman had accrued over the years, it was showing us that the death of his parents is the scar that cut the deepest. And by helping us to know where the characters stand in these instances, it helps us to understand what the stakes are for them. And that's one of the things that I do like because essentially they are serving as triple protagonists to the story as opposed to the three Jokers, a triple antagonist. And I just love that as towards the end of the book when it's Jason, Barbara, and Joker in the room together, the Joker already knows that he's gotten inside Jason's head. It starts off simple, but it's actually rather brilliant. He starts poking at him by saying, why would you take the name of a psychopathic killer, which then leads him into making Jason relive the trauma of being beaten by the crowbar. And even tying that up with Jason's last words were, please stop, if you don't kill me, I'll be your Robin, to which the Joker pointed out, you kind of already are because you took my name and you became a pain in the ass for Batman. And just the pure agony on Jason's face as he quickly remembers what it was like to be laying there broken in a pool of his own blood. And I don't know if that was part of this Joker's particular plan, but Jason shot him. Yeah. But what made it interesting also was the fact that 
it, at least it looked like Barbara attempted to stop him, but then Jason had to point out, you know, when is the last time you ever missed? Because she threw the battering, she just didn't get it in time. Which asks the question, did she subconsciously let this happen because she wanted it to? And so when Jason brings that up, she starts crying, she walks out, because at that point, she may even be questioning that herself. Did I let this happen? It's not what Batman would have wanted, it's not what Batman would have done. By throwing the Batarang, she can tell herself, I at least tried, but then of course does have to struggle with that herself. But really, why wouldn't she? I mean, as we saw when it came to her particular flashback, aka that scene from The Killing Joke where the Joker had shot her and we saw the bullet wound and stuff like that. And heck, even prior to that, when she was just working out on the treadmill and you saw it on the TV that, you know, wrestles leg syndrome, then the news pops up with that comedian that had gotten killed and Barbara just hears the Joker's name and just starts running as fast as she can until she breaks the treadmill. And even as she walks off, someone else in the gym had even pointed out that this was not the first time she had done it. And it really shows that even now, even after she got the use of her legs back, just that day haunted her so much. Which also starts to make me wonder what's going to happen when she does meet the version of the Joker that shot her in the first place. And then of course there's, well, the three Jokers themselves. And then when we see all three of them together for the first time, it looks like that there's some kind of Joker hierarchy going on where there seems to be, I guess, a first original Joker, which was the one sitting at the table. And then you have another Joker who is also uh, dressed in purple, but then there's also the Joker who is, well, the killing joke Joker. And the two standing up, again, are serving the one sitting down because heck, he is the one calling the shots. And when two of the Jokers ask what are they supposed to do next, the boss Joker simply says, what we always do, try to create a better Joker. Which I find kind of interesting because from the sounds of it, there is of course your one original true Joker, but then all of the other ones have been manufactured. Even Barbara makes a statement later in the book that he's been able to kind of, you know, change his appearance a little bit here and there and stuff like that. So it's interesting that they do acknowledge the physical change in his features but ultimately decide that, you know, there's still only got to be one. And now with the death of one Joker in a book called Three Jokers, it is possible that as soon as we get to the next book, a third Joker might pop up yet again. Maybe there would be some kind of, I don't know, uh, Joker rule kind of like the Sith. Always three there are. No more, no less. A master and two disciples. And I'm not gonna lie, the idea of that does kind of remind me of this novel called The Batman Murders, in which case the Joker actually had a plan to kind of brainwash people, some into thinking that they're Batman, and others thinking that they're the Joker. But I'm definitely interested to see the process of how this works when they create a new Joker. And as far as little details go, I mean, there's there's so much to talk about. Particularly, I really like all of the things like the smiling sharks and fish. And then, of course, the return of Gaggy. Because way before Harley Quinn was ever a thing, in Batman issue number 186, we got Gaggy, the Joker's original sidekick. But either way, he pops up from time to time, and it was cool to see him for a couple of panels before he was eaten by a smiling shark and all of these elements come back together just made one hell of a first book it's what i consider a fully appetizing comic i read it i was absolutely satisfied but it left just enough questions to me wanting more and i definitely want to get to the next issue as soon as possible i think we're gearing up for an amazing story here and i'm going to score batman three jokers a 10 out of 10. Jeff Johns and team blew my socks off with this book. And if you haven't read this book, go get it. Go get it. Go enjoy it. It's awesome. Also, one thing I'm wondering, is this book in continuity? Because, I mean, the New 52 universe was in continuity prior to Rebirth. It was mentioned there. But this came out in Black Label. Black Label is supposed to be continuity. DC, just make it continuity. So Batman the Three Jokers, what did you think about this book? I would love to hear your thoughts. 
please leave your comments in the comment section below. And if you like this video, I'd love it if you'd smash that like button, share it with some friends, subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and ring that notification bell for more comic book content. And if you're wondering what to watch next, consider one of these two videos. Alright, take care, have a great day, and as always, stay geeky.